Okay, folks, so this is the review of my 2014 S1000R, and this is what it, she looks like. Um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love the color combination. I had some additional decals added on to the wheels, but other than that, it's pretty much standard. Just with the exception of a few protective bits on the sides, um, the crash bobbins, um, and uh, you know the radiator and oil guard. But other than that, and some you know kind of short bendy levers. Um, but other than that, pretty much standard. Uh, and love the way she looks. Okay, people, welcome back. Now, this is my S1000R, and I'm coming back as you can see. I'm on the Euro Tunnel and I've done roughly about 2300 miles on us so far in the space of about six days and she has been absolutely incredible. Got another 200 miles to do back to Birmingham so by the time that this trip's over it's going to be about two and a half thousand miles and I've shot this at the end just well I don't know why but um, I just want to talk you through some of the stuff that I've got as a setup on my bike. Uh, well, starting from the front um, where I'm out for my phone these are absolutely brilliant and when I bought the bike I'll take you on the side it already had the 5 volt charger attached and that's switched into the mains ignition so when the ignition comes on that comes on it's not a constant feed into the battery it's really handy because if you forget to leave something plugged in, it doesn't drain your battery. Um, there was also one that I put on. So I've got one, two, three charging points which are really, really useful. And what I tend to do with this one here is plug it in, leave it there and charge my phone on my RAM mount here. And then for this one, uh, if there's anything else that I need charging, either into my tank bag, which I'll talk to you in about a sec, or for one of my camera mounts, there's a camera that I've got that I want to charge, I can just plug it straight into here, mount the camera, and plug the camera straight in. So, charging ports, RAM mount, phone holder, and the phone holder goes straight into the nuts on the bolts for the handlebars which are great uh, and then as you've already seen I've got a Gibby tank bag with the tank lock this felt better on the boots I'm not sure if it's just a problem with the lock it doesn't feel as stable on this one and incidentally on this one because there's no exposed rings uh, sorry screws or nuts you need to mount this on the inside of the cap the petrol cap um, and if you have a look at the tank lock I think it's BF11 it'll show you how to do that um, it's a bit fiddly you gotta be careful not to drop the nuts into the petrol tank uh, but once it's done it's fairly stable you know it's strong um, it's just how it marries up with the tank bag it's okay it's not brilliant it doesn't feel sturdy so this year I decided to use the straps loop them through the handlebars and uh, just kind of buckle them there to make sure that it's actually secure and doesn't run off uh, or it doesn't fall loose okay so that's the kind of front end uh, of it um, sideways there's not much else the back I've got my 46 litre um, tank sorry top box and this has been brilliant I mean it's a Givy one as well, so Givy tank bag, Givy top box, Givy's been brilliant for me. The V47 Monarchy. The great thing about this is, you know, you can stop off somewhere, and we stopped off at loads of places, you don't have to worry about somebody coming into your luggage, you know, with soft luggage options. If you've got straps, somebody can unstrap it, run off with it, cut it, take something out of it. Uh, with this you don't need to worry about any of that, you know, it's locked, it's secure, it stays on the bike. Um, there's the base plate here that you can see there's another video that I've done in relation to this you can have a look at it on the YouTube channel um, but this is absolutely brilliant it's my fourth trip with this particular box and I absolutely love it and I managed to get all of my crap in there as well and it's held up brilliantly doesn't matter how packed it is I squeeze it down and managed to get it shut and you know what it stayed solid 
uh, never had a problem with it so you know highly recommend one of these uh, Hepco Becker base plate uh, I bought it because I wasn't too convinced uh, with the seat option and I will tell you right now if you're thinking about mounting a top box to a uh, pillion seat don't bother this thing will come loose yeah if you're planning on doing a touring mission maybe for short commutes around the city is okay if you've got your sandwiches and you know your phone in there fine but if you've got your luggage and stuff in there never don't do it because the thing will just rip off there's too much weight there's too much g-force on it uh, and that thing is just screwed into plastic and it would just completely break off this thing came loose the clip on that came loose um, and that's a steel plate um, held in by you know steel screws and nuts so you know a plastic seat just won't do it it will come off and then you'll have either you'll cause an accident if somebody's riding behind you you'll either damage somebody else's car or worst case you know it'll come off get caught up in your wheel or something and you'll come straight off the bike um, and you know you'll lose all your luggage so go with a solid option uh, solid option being the Hepco Becker plate uh, mount your Gibby Bapes plate to the Hepco Becker plate and then stick your top rock, top thingy on that uh, then on this side I kept a uh, puncher repair kit just in case I always travel with tools and I've got a bunch of tools at the bottom of that on top of that I've got my, uh, my you know my, my, my stuff of the week my you know undies and t-shirts and a little bit of snacks and all that kind of stuff um, so that's it that's the setup of the bike and uh, that's what I took. Uh, I took my uh, disc block with me as well, uh, just to kind of keep the bike safe as we parked up overnight. Um, and that was it. Essentially, that's the kind of minimal setup that I needed. The bike itself, my God, has been absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I can't, uh, I can't fault it in any way. Um, you know, there's an issue that I personally have uh, with the seat. I think it's just too uncomfortable and that's even after putting in gel insert fo uh, foam topper um, you know but then you know we were spending about seven eight hours in the saddle uh, every day uh, and today has been a really long journey I've done about seven I'm going to do about 700 miles I've done about 500 miles so far to Calais uh, and another 200 miles home so we've got 700 miles so you expect your ass to feel sore after 700 miles but uh, the standard seat is rock hard um, even with the inserts on it's still you know not as comfortable as I'd like it to be so perhaps there's a conversation to be had around getting a custom seat made um, but other than that you know what it's been brilliant man the way that it has handled the roads the straights um, I'll do a proper review on it after uh, a little bit later on as I'm showing you the footage of the route, some of the routes that we took but I would highly highly recommend this BMW motor I've smashed it out of the park with this particular bike mate honestly absolutely brilliant so that's it folks um, video updates of our trip along with a review of the bike to follow okay then folks so you've seen the setup on the bike um, and this was our route um, not all of it most of it so started off here in sunny Birmingham the center of the universe and um, actually I had to stop uh, in Coventry first because I'm also a priest uh, and I had to get a couple married. Uh, a bit of a shotgun wedding, but that's a completely different story. Uh, so from Birmingham via Coventry um, and then took the motorway all the way down to Folkestone. Stopped at Beaconsfield for some fuel uh, and to meet up with uh, one of my travel buddies. And then the pair of us then uh, fueled up, took a bit of a break. Um, and rode all the way down to Folkestone where we met um, our other uh, travel buddies who were coming all the way from Manchester, believe it or not. So they had a longer journey uh, there and back uh, from Folkestone uh, across the pond to Calais. And this is, I suppose, day zero. Um, and then from Calais, we stopped off in Arras. Um, now, the plan was that we'll try and get to Arras at a reasonable time. Um, but <laughs> our plans are about as good as a, a distraction from a kebab um somehow i don't know how but we ended up leaving i ended up leaving birmingham at about two o'clock in the afternoon um and it was about 10 o'clock before we left folkestone 
Now, I honestly don't know what happens or how it happens, but every single year we just seem to get caught into some kind of time vortex. Uh, and for some reason, it's about eight or ten hours to before we bloody leave the UK. And that's only from Birmingham. It's 200 miles. Jesus, it shouldn't take eight hours. Anyway, I'm renting. So um, it, it was 10 o'clock by the time that we left um, Folkestone, got into Calais for 11.30 because of an hour difference and half, around, half an hour on the... Uh, uh, Euro tunnel. Uh, so it's about half 11 by the time that we got off here. And uh, as soon as we got off, you know, the lads were hungry. So we ended up going for a kebab and chips at about midnight. Uh, finished that at about half 12, one o'clock. And then we had an hour's run from where we were to Arras. So it was about two o'clock in the morning. So it took us 10 hours to, to uh, well, 12 hours, sorry, for me to do that journey. Got to Arras, debunked there, stayed there the night. And then from Arras all the way to Lyon. Uh, to here we pretty much took the motorways just so we could get closer to this part here that's where we were interested in uh, and as you can see from there we went to grass grass to lake como um, and that's where it started getting interesting from leon it started getting interesting um, that was a nice route that we did um, as we got into uh, you know this part here it was just beautiful absolutely phenomenal the coast of italy man jeez just wow um and then uh, we ran this route uh into uh it wasn't switzerland it was actually um this part first the loop around uh stelvio pass you know we've done the french uh, alps swiss alps um and um you know on, on this route was route napoleon as well uh somewhere around here god knows where it is or is it up here I'm not sure um but we had to hit that route um and you know the twisties from this part were just incredible absolutely incredible um ran that route all the way around um and on the penultimate day i think it was day six um we stopped back in geneva um now from geneva uh just on the border with uh the you know france um and on the final day we were supposed to ride from here to amiens uh, which is somewhere around here um so we could stop there uh, rest up and uh, day seven it would have been to ride back home uh, to birmingham that was the plan but when we got to here one of the lads started missing his kids uh, and we'd done most of the interesting riding and we thought well actually you know what we all kind of miss our kids so uh, yeah let's do it so you know one in everyone in um and we decided from that point there from here that we're going to ride all this way back to here and obviously the guys from manchester had another you know uh hour and a half two hour ride back from birmingham they live in you know greater manchester um and that was the 700 mile ride in the day from geneva all the way back to birmingham on the s1000r um absolutely loved it um but i'll talk a little bit more about the bike the setup the ride the handling well you've done the setup but the ride and the handling uh, um, and whether or not you know i'll consider it to be a touring bike um in the next clip so um stay tuned <laughs> to get to whatever we're getting inshallah we khair and with afia protect us from difficulties hardships calamities right then folks so the s1000 r mine is a 2014 uh, and I've got to say, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the way that this machine performed. Um, I've never had a naked bike before. Um, and one of the other videos that I've done, I talk about uh, the history of my bike. So, you know, very, very quickly, uh, I started off on a Triumph RFs, RS Sprint um, 2002. But that was my first bike. Um, and then after that, um, I went on to a Jixa. Uh, K4, then after that Hayabusa Gen 1, then after that K1200S, then after that Hayabusa Gen 2. So they've all been kind of that that style of bike, fully fared bikes. Um, the Busa was phenomenal. I've done a video on the road trip uh, that we had in 2019 on the Busa, um, and I was just so so in love with it. 2018, 2019, so in love with it. Um, I thought that's it. This is going to be my bike for the rest of my life now. 
Uh, I'm going to stick with Suzuki and da 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 da. da. Uh, but then the following year, I went back. Um, I think it was 2019, and uh, we've done a bit more uh, in terms of mileage. We ran about 19, 1800 miles uh, the year before. We did about 1500 miles, and what I started to find were uh, pains in my wrists, pains in my shoulders and lower back, and also in my knees. Uh, as well, um, we did, did an extra three or four hundred miles in the same amount of time, and um, I thought, mm, okay, um, maybe I'm just getting a bit too old for it. So let's try and get something that's a bit more upright, or as they call, sit up and beg. Um, so I had a look round, and I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted because I was so kind of, uh, you know, um, intoxicated with the speed that the booster offers. I tried a couple of three, I tried the MT-10, I tried the uh, KTM Super Duke, um, and then also tried the S1000R, and I liked the S1000R the most, so I ended up getting one. Um, and basically what I want to talk about uh, in this video now is, you know, two real things. Um, firstly, uh, the kind of comfort of the S1000R. Um, and secondly, um, you know, what, what my touring experience on it was. Uh, and whether you can tour on a S1000R. So let's get into it. So can you tour on an S1000R? Uh, short answer is yes. Um, the bike is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, we covered about two and a half thousand miles over five, maybe six days. Um, and on the last leg, uh, of the journey um, we ran 700 miles to get back home uh, because we decided at about one o'clock in the afternoon that we're all missing our kids and we want to get home uh, and uh, we'd smoke some cigars and we, none of us smoke uh, and I think we were probably a little bit lightheaded when we made that decision um, we were right down by Lake Geneva um, and we decided that we we're going to run all the way to, well I live in Birmingham, uh, all the way to Calais, then from Calais uh, to Folkestone, then from Folkestone back home. Um, it took us about 12 hours of non-stop riding, and when I say non-stop, I'm literally talking non-stop. The only time that we stopped was for fuel and um, you know to, to, to go to the loop, uh, and that was it. But from Geneva, Lake Geneva, all the way to Birmingham uh, was in excess of 12 hours. That was 700 miles that we covered on that day and the S1000R was my god it was just effortless man I won't say effortless it just performed effortlessly um, you know whatever I wanted it to do it done whatever I asked for it to you know do it did it was just unbelievable um, the way that that machine performed on the last day just absolutely phenomenal so can you tour on it yes absolutely you can you've already seen the setup that I had on my bike with you know my my luggage options uh, and I try to travel as light as possible um, the Givy top box has been absolutely brilliant the plate by Hepco and Becker absolutely brilliant now uh, and I've already covered this uh, at the beginning of the video uh, some folks suggest um, that you're able to you know drill the plate into a uh, passenger seat I wouldn't even go there you know don't even consider it don't even entertain that thought purely because you know when you uh, the, the amount of weight that you end up carrying in your top box is going to pull on that plastic and it's just not going to last you you'll go around a couple of corners and next thing you know your undies will be all over the the Alps or the uh, or the M6 motorway so you don't want you don't want that uh, invest in the Hepco uh, Hepco and Becker plate uh, that's a solid solid steel plate invest in the right lock equipment for it and you know what it will it would do you for life even if you sell the bike and you come back um, to getting another one you can hold on to the parts and put it on your new bike um, so you know uh, keep um, keep the investment is certainly certainly worth investing in so uh, the Hepco and Becker uh, give you top box I put all my junk in there my ram mount you know my, uh, my cam mounts and all of those kind of things the setup you've already you've already seen um, and what that does then is that gives you the ability to you know kind of go anywhere you want we covered two almost almost 2600 miles uh on our journey um and you know the bike was brilliant absolutely brilliant okay so um a couple of things that i'd like to talk about um after i've kind of fanboyed over the bike enough um is the ride itself 
um, and I want to try and break that up into two areas, the, you know, the short journeys uh, and the twisties in the city riding and the long rides on the motorways. Um, so the short rides, uh, you know, it's, it's great, it's light, it's nimble, um, you can throw it around quite comfortably and this was brilliant for the Stelvio Pass run that we did um, and when we're going through the French Alps and when we covered Route Napoleon even with um, the uh, Givy Top Box at the back and actually one of the great things about the S1000R um, is that you can set up the one rider up or two rider up setting straight from the you know the control cluster uh, on the left hand side so I'm going to put the top box on because um, I, I, end, I end up carrying more junk than I need uh, and my top box was fairly heavy so I'll put it up as though I've got two people riding and that kind of adjusts all the suspension settings um, and then you've got the uh, obviously the riding modes as well um, we didn't fortunately we didn't run into any rain um, but I'd either have it on dynamic or dynamic pro uh, dynamic pro um, other people will talk about this kind of reduces all of the rider aids um, and even in dynamic uh, when the rider aids are in you got the full power but the rider aids are in you know you give it the beans and the front end wants to come up um, you know I got the front end up a couple of three times uh, on mine not much but it does want to come up uh, you take that off and you know you really got to know what you're doing um, and how to handle these kind of bikes I don't so I leave it on I never put it into dynamic pro because I think it's more than I can handle uh, but the point is uh, that you know when you're kind of uh, it's so nimble and flickable you can adjust all the suspension settings accordingly on your uh, off the cluster and you can adjust the rider modes depending upon how brave you're feeling or how uh, what the weather's like whether it's dry whether it's wet um, and that kind of gives you uh, you know the adjustments that you need without having to fiddle about with you know uh, turning things and suspension which I, I, you know I, re I really like um, and around town that's ideal um, you, you know it, it, cr it gives the bike that kind of nimbleness when you, as you're coming through the, the kind of towns and little villages and we we did that we uh, tried to avoid motorway riding as much as possible because it's boring we wanted to go through the back roads and see the cities and uh, obviously the you know the routes that we spoke about the alps when you're going through those routes routes it's absolutely brilliant it's not necessarily about you know top end speed it's about you know how you're able to flick the bike around the corners and around the twisties and around the bends and this was just absolutely brilliant last year um we uh, covered it on the busa I found the booster really big, really heavy, and I just wasn't confident in tipping it into the corners, uh, left-hand bends or right-hand bends. And incidentally, I'm better at left turns than I am at right turns. It's just you know how I am, and I think other riders probably find that as well. Uh, but the booster on the left and the right, I was really, really cautious because it was such a big thing. With this, I was just so I felt so much more confident, um, you know, and it was just a, a, a joy, and it makes the riding experience so much better. You you want to get on your bike. You want to ride the roads. You want to find the twisties, um, and I just, I just absolutely loved it. So in that respect, you know what? An absolute ten out of ten. It didn't fail at all. You know, it met, if not exceeded the expectations. The power was there. Uh, you know, from the engine. Um, you know, the, the the braking was brilliant as well. The way it kind of tipped into the corners and pulled out. You know, it was just nimble incredibly incredibly nimble so for you know short journeys you know pottering around town if you wanted to um, or if you're kind of throwing it around the twisties where you're not after top end speed absolutely brilliant loved it and I would give it a solid 10 um, now when you get onto the longer roads um, the dual carriageways or the equivalent in Europe uh, when you get onto the motorways how does it fare in those areas well, you know, it's boring um, being on that kind of run, but we had to do that to get to where we wanted to. So the first day or so was kind of dual carriageways and motorways. Um, and even though it's boring, um, you've got the cruise control, which is a godsend. Honestly, uh, I never appreciated how valuable that was until I, bought, um, I got it on the uh, S1000R and I used it. Um, it just, you know, it's just brilliant um, and I wouldn't have a bike now that hasn't got cruise control uh, and as much as I love the Hayabusa, as much as I love the speed of it, um, you know, it's missing these creature comforts so I was looking at if I was to change the S1000R what would I go for and the only thing that I can think of is probably the H2SX 
um, which is really, really kind of similar uh, and probably carries a bit more speed uh, than the S1000R and obviously comes with the fairings. So the, um, the cruise control is absolutely imperative for me now. You've got the, not only the cruise control, you've got the, obviously the dynamic rider modes and you've got the, uh, uh, the heated grips and all those kind of creature comforts. Um, so it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, so that helps on the long run um, and up until I'd say probably about 90 or 100 mile per hour uh, you're okay with the wind as well the wind isn't too bad anything more than that then you've got to try and tuck in every ounce of chub and fat that you've got because the wind's going to beat you up real bad uh, there's zero zero protection past those speeds uh, as you'd expect and it's, it's a naked you know um, it's my first naked incidentally um, but it is, uh, you know, you're going to struggle with the wind um, beyond those speeds. Um, you know, uh, it, and it depends on who you're riding with. So some of the folks that uh, I was riding with had big bikes. They, you know, one of the guys had a ZZR 1400. The other, the other chap had a KTM 1290 Super Duke. And the other guy had the Aprilia... Uh, uh, to own a uh, factory so you know it's the, and they're quick bikes uh, and they can kind of do the top end quite comfortably especially the zzr you know that 150 you know without even without even stretching its legs um and you know you're going to appreciate that you're not going to hit those kind of top speeds on this bike um you'll get there um and you know um, it's going to be a, a bit of a, a kind of you know um uh, I wouldn't say struggle, but it, you know it probably won't be as enjoyable as it would if you were on a fully fared bike and you've got all that protection around you, and you've got to accept that that's just what comes with the territory. But then that's a bit of a trade-off. But when you kind of look at how the bike compares on the runs around the twisties, you know what it is just brilliant, and it's also the the kind of the riding position as well so you know whilst you're on that speed uh, sorry whilst you're on the long runs up to about 80 90 100 mile per hour right fair enough you after 100 you're going to struggle with the wind uh, but up to about 100 uh, and to be honest with you you're not going to go much faster than that um, uh, very often you're okay and you can keep up with uh, you know the traffic you can keep up with your mates um, and you can get to where you need to get to in a reasonable amount of time um, but the the compromise um, that you give or offer from a fully fared bike uh, is found in the riding position um, the comfort the ability to you know get off the bike and not feel absolutely battered your shoulders aren't hurting your necks not hurting you know your wrists aren't hurting uh, and that was one of the greatest things I found about this S1000R um, was that I got off at the end of the day and my body uh, was still in one piece um, now there is a caveat to this and this is a huge caveat I don't know what BMW Motorrad put in that seat but it might as well have been granite or titanium it is rock rock solid rock solid uh, and my ass couldn't handle that kind of punishment so before I left I ended up putting a gel form insert uh, into the seat to try and make it more comfortable um, and to a degree it helped um, but you know I think I need to get a custom seat made for this um, because it, it's just still so so uncomfortable um, it makes it really difficult to cover the distance and to cover the time in you know with what you want to do so if you're trying to cover you know like um, uh, 12 hours riding a day um, or 10 hours riding a day you know the first second day you'll be okay third or fourth day you'll start feeling sore by the time that I got home uh, after that 700 miles <laughs> I was crying uh, I'll be honest with you I was in so much pain I had to say to the missus come on love put out the cream um, I'm you know uh, I'm in pain here um, so something needs to happen about the seats I mean there's all kinds of uh, aftermarket things that you can get you know shag piles and air seats and all those kind of things which if I keep this I'm going to have to look into one of the other things that I found about the seat uh, is that it slightly leans forward um, so as you look at the back of the seat it just kind of leans up or curves up very very uh, marginally uh, ever so slightly so 
but what the impact of that is that it kind of leans you on to the front a little bit more than perhaps you would like it's not a fully upright riding position it's much much better than a sports bike it's much better than the Busa um, and also the S1000 double R which incidentally I really do like as well and I've been contemplating getting one of those but that's a separate conversation but it does lean you onto the handlebars a little bit more than perhaps you would like um, and maybe that's a mod that some people would want to look into if they decide to cover that kind of distance um, but other than that um, if you can kind of navigate that uh, the, the the seat issue the seat issue I found to be the biggest biggest problem um, because that was what pained me the most around you know the, my, my, my glutes the inside of my thighs um, and it gets to a point where you know you don't want to get on the bike anymore even though you're enjoying everything else about it uh, you're enjoying the experience you're loving how it's responding and all of that kind of stuff when it's physically painful to be on it uh, after a while and this was probably day five day six uh, you think that you know what oh, I, ju I just uh, I just don't want to ride anymore for a while um, so uh, anybody who's thinking about covering long long distance will probably want to think about um, what they're going to do about seat and comfort and whether they want to put any mods in to try and make the seat softer and more comfortable so um, that's pretty much um, it from my end folks um, the bike was absolutely brilliant uh, mechanically it didn't miss a beat um, I had it serviced before I left as I always do um, I took it to BMW Motorrad in Wolverhampton uh, they gave it the once over checked everything serviced it um, and I put a new set of boots on it before I went as well with some uh, pretty angel STs um, and that was it uh, away away I went uh, <laughs> incidentally you know we started I started from Birmingham road down to Coventry and because I'm a priest uh, as well uh, I had to get somebody married before I went so my route from Birmingham was Birmingham through to Coventry pit stop get somebody married um, after they got married and I don't think they've ever had a priest on a motorbike on the way to Italy uh, before which you know is a, a bit of a rare combination so I'll pat myself on the back for that uh, and then um, next stop from Coventry was Beaconsfield where I met up with my pals um, and then from Beaconsfield all the way to Folkestone and that's when the journey started um, so yeah that's my review of the 2014 S1000 single R uh, in all honesty, if I was to sell this bike, I genuinely don't know what I would get next. Uh, I'm looking at probably getting a newer version of the same thing, um, or possibly the uh, Kawasaki H2SX. Um, but if anybody's thinking about getting a S1000R, absolutely, you know what, don't even buy it, you wouldn't even think twice, uh, and you certainly wouldn't look back. Um, and uh, if you're thinking about going on a road trip with an S1000R, can you do it? Absolutely, you can. Uh, the only issue that you might face, as mentioned, is the comfort on the seat. If you've got the right setup, and you don't need a lot, um, you know, in terms of equipment that you take, I always overpack. Um, so my top box is always kind of crammed. Um, but you know, with the tank bag, with the top box, and all of those kind of things, uh, get the right stuff that's available. Give you. Hep Colbecker, give you top box, give you tank bag, Hep Colbecker, um, give you also do the plate for the uh, specific plate mounting uh, for the petrol tank, um, and that's it. You know, you're good to go. Uh, I had some, you know, charging points wired in to the bike as well. They were already wired in when I bought it, uh, and that's my touring setup. Once you've managed to do all of that and you've got your kind of bike uh, ready to go. Um, you know you're gonna have an incredible time you will have absolutely have an incredible time and the way that the bike performs especially around uh, you know the twisties um, is just absolutely incredible absolutely incredible and um, you know if you're thinking about it uh, and, you, and you're you, you know you're not sure you know plan it do it um, you'll absolutely absolutely love it s1000r BMW have made a phenomenal phenomenal machine um, and yeah, I'm absolutely loving it at the moment. So um, that's it from uh, from me, folks. If there's any kind of questions, uh, drop a comment, um, and I'll be oh, I'll try and respond as soon as I possibly can. Take care, folks, and safe riding. A couple of cyclists on our side, and there's a couple of more bikers coming in. So these cyclists aren't. Uh, you got the pool in there, okay? 
Wow, this is phenomenal, man. Couple of bikers, now they've pulled over. Ooh, hairpin to the right. Clear so far. 